Hey, good morning, guys. Come back here <laughs> to the pond again. <clears throat> Get out before a little uh, little August wakes up. Comes out. She's she's snoring away up there. Had a long night. She did. Uh, so that's pretty neat, you know. I get out and, and uh, man, it's a nice walk. It's cool out here. It's 62 degrees uh, Fahrenheit here at our house down here in the valley. And uh, I told Marsha when I got up this morning, I said, "Man, it's cold enough out there to snow." She says, "Oh, I said, you're crazy. You're crazy." I said, "Yeah, I like warm weather." <laughs> I want to put y'all, see here's where I put you. I put this tripod right here. And so that's where I set it. It works out pretty good. See how it works today. Some days it'll stay put and other days this rascal just, it just won't stay. It just moves around too much. It depends on how I get it wrapped up in there, I guess. <laughs> get it wrapped up where it don't fall out. Yeah. <clears throat> yep, pretty neat. Down here so I don't fall off that. I, there's a rock down there I stand on to put that up there in that tree. I'm still going to put a platform back here and uh, put a table and chairs so Marcia can come back with me. And we'll set back here. And until it snows, I'm not looking forward to that. Cold weather makes me... It stoves me up, makes me right. <laughs> I don't function very good. Wow, but that's all right, you know. That's all right. We'll still get out and do videos somewhere, some way. We'll get out here in the middle of it and uh, see what's going on, right? All right. So today we got today's September the seventeenth, um, Thursday, Thursday. This month is over half gone. And uh, October, November, December, three months left this year. Wow. All right, so I have Ephesians 1, verse 8 here this morning. And uh, the references tied to it. <clears throat> it's been a while since I, I might have not told you all how to do that. I've, I've mentioned it, but for those of you who don't, don't know, I pull the references, you know, on, on uh, some Bibles. I was told a long time ago by a, a guy that, that teaches. He does a lot of teaching. And he says, get your Bible that's got references in it. And that way you can follow references around and, and uh, you have a more in-depth study that way. So, you know, I've done that. I bought a lot of Bibles with references in them. And, and I also bought them that had commentaries. Because I didn't understand scriptures. I didn't understand who God was or what God was. I had no idea. And I've seen those people in churches that they, they always said, uh, do you have a relationship with, with, with Jesus? Do you have a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus? And, you know, I've got, they, they say, you know, I've got, uh, I've got this personal relationship that, that, uh, and I, how do you do that? How do you get a relationship with something you can't see? And that always bothered me. I never could. So I got I got to buy Bibles, and I've got a bunch of them up there uh, with commentaries in them because I figured those guys uh, they went to school and they studied and they know all there is about God. So I'd buy commentaries, and some of the commentaries they they wouldn't align with each other. So. If they're not in alignment with each other, they're not inspired. <laughs> and I, so I take these commentaries, and they had references in them. They had references, you know, on the, down the side of the column. They'd have, you know, references for each verse. Or some Bibles have two columns, and right down the middle, they'd have references. But they had references. Well, I take those references like that, and I will go through Paul's writings only through the 13 letters of Paul because he is our apostle today uh, there's no doubt no doubt about that it wasn't Peter it was Paul Peter was for the circumcision Peter was for Israel uh, 
and Paul is for the nations. Sure, there's some from the from the circumcision that will come into the uncircumcision gospel because you know they understand that they, that's what God intended. Uh, but Paul is our apostle. The risen Christ revealed Himself to him for a reason, for a specific reason. He gave us the conciliation. He gave us the gospel. Uh, of the conciliation, how that God was in Christ conciliating the world to himself. And we are ambassadors as God entreating through us to be conciliated to God. That's what he gave us, that message uh, of the conciliation. So that's what we do in through Paul's writings. You don't get that anywhere but Paul's writings. Uh, and that's what we do. So I've got... Ephesians 1, 8 here, and uh, verse 8 says, which he lavishes on us in all wisdom and prudence. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull down verse 7 and read it together with verse 8, and then we'll go on through with the references, all right? So here it is in Ephesians uh, 1, 7, and then we'll drop into verse 8 and do the references to that. And whom we are having the deliverance through his blood, the forgiveness of offenses in the court of the riches of his grace, which he lavishes on us in all wisdom and prudence. There he is. But not as the offenses, thus also the grace. For if by the offenses of the one, the many died, much rather the grace of God and the gratuity and grace, which is of the one man, Jesus Christ, to the many superabounds. Yet law came in by the way that the offenses should be increasing. Yet where sin increases, grace super exceeds. That even as sin reigns in death, thus grace also should be reigning through righteousness for life eonian through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, the depths and the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and untraceable his ways. For the word of the cross is stupidity indeed to those who are perishing. Yet to us who are being saved it is a power of God. For it is written, I shall be destroying the wisdom of the wise. And the understanding of the intelligent shall I be repudiating. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the discusser of this eon? Does not God make stupid the wisdom of this world? For since, in fact, in the wisdom of God, the world, through wisdom, knew not God. God delights through the stupidity of the heralding to save those who are believing. Since, in fact, Jews' signs are requesting, and Greeks' wisdom are seeking. Yet we are heralding Christ crucified to the Jews, indeed a snare, yet to the nations, stupidity. Yet to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the stupidity of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. But we are speaking God's wisdom in a secret, wisdom which has been concealed, which God designates before before the eons for our glory and him in whom our lot was cast also being designated beforehand according to the purpose of the one who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will that now may be known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials through the ecclesia the multifarious wisdom of God in whom all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are concealed. <laughs> yeah, you can't add anything to that. No, sir, that's a Ephesians 1, 8 and the references tied to it. I get to writing these things out and, uh, you know, this just that one verse. And sometimes you go one above or one below just to get the context of that put together. Uh, I'm writing some in, uh, I think in verse 12 today. I, I'm not sure where I'm at. But I'm thinking, man, there's so much good stuff here in Ephesians. You know, you don't want to, and, and 
and uh, there's a long time in there where the writings don't have a it, it doesn't uh, there's not a period you know the the paragraphs and you're knowing that you know Paul was long-winded he was I'm in verse uh, writing in verse 13 uh, I want to you know I'm like man there's so much good in this thing I just want to read the whole chapter <laughs> the whole thing you know <laughs> it just there's so much and, and the neat thing you know, even if we have doubts, if, if we doubt things, Christ is faithful. He is faithful. We cannot lose our salvation. There's nothing we can do to lose our salvation. Nothing. Christ is faithful. If we have doubts, it don't matter. You know, we do. We, we all have doubts. We doubt things in Scripture. We, you know, you wonder, well, does that apply to me? Am I really in the body of Christ? Is this... Jesus Christ. Christ is faithful. Just know that. He is faithful. He is faithful. So, we understand that and we know that. Right? So, we can hang our hat on that. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the house and get me a jacket on. I'm, it's cold back here. I didn't realize I always wear shorts all the time. I very seldom wear long breeches. I don't like them. I had to wear them all my, all my life working. You had to wear those uniform things that's stiff and, and uh, you know, still toe boots, uh, hard hats and safety glasses and, and gloves. You know, I had to wear all that stuff. I worked for uh, in the industrial gas and welding business. And I pumped medical oxygen. That's what I've done for the better part of 25 years. I've done medical oxygen. And, uh, you know, I had to wear all that safety gizmos and, and uniforms and all these stiff stuff. So boy, I, when I got out of that, I, I'm into shorts and tennis shoes, you know. <laughs> That's what I do. But, anyway, it's going to be an awesome day. And uh, I'm anxious to get out and see what God's got lined up for us today. All right. So, I'll talk to you all. I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.